Boodoo. And boodoo. There we go. All right. Well, let's get this underway. What's happening, everybody? Mobius Y here. Time of recording this is Monday, November 2nd. And last week, having beaten Dark Souls, it's time to move on to the next stream game. And the one that was voted um, second highest by my viewers in the Discord was Massive Chalice, which I was actually kind of surprised uh, that it got so many votes, but at the same time, kind of pleased, because this is actually a game I quite like. I got it for free a very long time ago. It was offered as like a games with gold kind of thing in the bobber. I can't remember when that was. I think it was sometime in 2015, which is strange because, like, that was the year it came out, so not 100% on that. But uh, anyways, um, this is it's basically an ice, ice. You have two. You have the two modes. You have the one overview strategic mode where you construct structures and research new technologies. Well, technologies, uh, and then you have an isometric. Uh, tactical mode when you engage in battles, so in a lot of ways it's quite similar to XCOM, but it's a lot more uh, fantasy themed. And unfortunately, a lot of people and a lot of videos that I've gone over where they give it like a cursory glance, I don't think they played it for very long because they basically inferred that, yeah, it's the, the game's alright, but it's not that deep. I much prefer, like, I, I always, I prefer XCOM, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, did you actually play it? <laughs> Sometimes sometimes I question that whenever I watch videos for games I have played. I don't know, maybe it's just me and my uh, cognitive bias towards a game. Because I actually quite like this game. Um, I've played it a lot. I've gone back and replayed it over the years. And you'll see when I start a new game that uh, I actually do have a game in progress that I started... Uh, a few weeks, a couple months ago, earlier this year, um, as I'm still trying to get this coveted achievement for beating the game on the hardest difficulty in Iron Man mode, or Iron Mode, I think they call it in this game. So let's jump to the main menu really quick. Uh, do let me know either in chat or in the YouTube comments uh, if I need to lower the sound in the game even more. Uh, I dropped it quite a bit from uh, what it normally is at, uh, so just let me know if I need to drop it a little bit more. Um, than what it is. Massive I want to keep, I want to keep the voice volume quite high. The music and SFX I want to drop a fair bit, uh, because those can be quite uh, overpowering. Massive uh, <laughs> chalice. Massive chalice. Massive chalice. Massive chalice. One of the reasons I like this game is you can have fun with just the menu. <laughs> um, so. This game was made by Double Fine, and uh, there is a lot of bad blood uh, against Double Fine, um, especially over the last like six or seven years. And I suppose it's somewhat understandable on my end. I think this is mm, one of their better games that they released. I th their favorite game from me, which I actually just started playing very recently with a buddy of mine, was it was called Trenched when it came out in 2010, but then they ran into lawsuit problems. And it's now called Iron Brigade. That's a fantastic game. If there is one game from Double Fine that you try out, uh, go try out Iron Brigade. It's fantastic. Uh, JB, what's going on, buddy? Thanks for coming by. Yeah, just let me know if the sound uh, gets a little bit worse. So, uh, we're going to start a new game here. Uh, be aware that this first portion of this of this stream game i'm going to enable tutorial mode because i want to use this as a bit more of a learning portion where we will still get into like a battle and do some strategic things uh for this first two hours but it, I'm, I'm gonna have tutorial mode on so all a lot of the early game stuff that happens for first time players is going to occur and we'll experience that. And I'm not going to talk a hell of a lot because there will be quite a bit of in-game talking. Uh, one of the things that always impresses me with the Double Fine games that I do play is they have uh, they have really good sound quality. Um, between the voice acting, the sound effects, and even uh, in a lot of cases just the music. Uh, maybe not so much Iron Brigade because it has extremely minimalistic music, but. Uh, 
This game, it has very chill music. Um, it was done by Brian Trifon. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And Brian White. Uh, very, very simplistic, but it's really good. Um, this particular background music, when you're looking at the main world map, uh, I actually use as reading music when I'm reading, you know, like Stephen Erickson or, you know, Malazan, Book of the Fallen, some, some stuff like that. I quite like it. The sound effects are on point, really well done, and the voice acting. It's really only two people that had to do the voice acting in this game, but it is top-notch voice acting. And it seems to be, like, it feels kind of like a, 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 an English-made game because there's some, there's some subtle and dry humor in there that I really appreciate from uh, British media. Anyway, so let's, let's jump into this. The th first thing we have to do is we jump in, start a new game, and we pick uh, a couple things here. Um, the kind of heroic bloodline names that we can choose. Uh, they have some serious, which are thematic names. They have some non-thematic, which are silly, or you can choose from both. Uh, and we're going to choose both. So the, for the difficulty, I'm just going to play this on normal. Uh, I am playing on Brutal right now, and I have beaten it on Brutal. And you heard that right. There is a guitar riff when you pick this difficulty. You know, very similar to the massive chalice when you change the voice volume. So that's kind of nice. So we're going to stick with a balanced start. Iron mode uh, is like Iron Man mode in Stellaris, like Iron Man mode in XCOM. You have a single save. It is overwritten every time you make a decision. So you move, a, so you move a character in a battle. Like even if you just move them one space, or you attack with them, or you have them sit there and wait, or decisions you make in this in this overview uh, strategic worldview, it saves every time you chick pick something. So I'm gonna leave that off so that I can save. You know when when it's time to end the stream and then we're going to enable the tutorial so we're going to allow both serious and non-serious heroic bloodline names when we jump into this so those of you watching this in the future on youtube thank you very much for watching if you would like to see some of my other videos i've got a let's play dark souls i've got some older let's plays of far cry primal mass effect uh but right now my channel is mostly focused on Stellaris console edition so if you like my content subscribe to the channel that really helps me out give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it uh, it will be a fairly long one uh, leave a comment below uh, giving your thoughts or some feedback and of course check out the links in the description below you'll find a link to my twitch channel which I streamed this off of come on by and watch me playing live I stream right now Mondays Tuesdays Thursdays and Fridays uh, every week uh, but definitely Tuesdays and Fridays uh, you'll also find a link to my Twitter feed. Give me a follow there. I post important announcements all the time. Last but not least, a link to my own personal Discord for fans of my channel. It's not mandatory to join, but I highly recommend it, as that's where I engage with my viewers the most. In fact, uh, this game was that is where this game was voted for, out of a list of potential games I thought would be fun to stream. <laughs> yeah, I agree, JB. The silly names would be best. Okay, so normally you can just jump straight into the game with five random houses. And what a house is, um, it's, it's um, as it said, it's a bloodline. It's, it's a name that is provided where uh, your heroes, which are basically your, like your soldiers, uh, your heroes belong to that house or that bloodline. Um, so they have the same last name and they often have similar traits and stuff. Never heard of those games, so looking forward to... To, oh, never heard of this game. Okay, no, that's good to hear, buddy. So, let's we can actually pick a specific name. So, uh, we hit the A button and it opens up the really lengthy name list. So let's go through a couple examples. Going to go all the way to the A. Uh, for example, so we've got Arbor Shate, uh, the keep name, which is like the home. The this house's home. Their the, their keep name is the Watch, and then you've got the founding male is Loazel. The founding female is Alicia because. Uh, for these five houses, you have a male and a female hero at the very beginning of the game. If you pick this, um, if you pick this uh, this house or this bloodline, their motto is "Ungaze our gaze unwavering." Excuse me, and their battle cry, which you see them shout. They don't like actually say it or anything. You see it in text. Their battle cry whenever they kill an enemy is the piercing eye. So you've got stuff like that, and then you've got uh, uh, things like abskebab. Uh, the keep name is the keep of dross founding nail p founding male excuse me paul founding female nadia motto uh squid is light statue is ground battle cry is be the chain 
And then you've got some things like Abernathy, where the keep name is the Pie Forge. The founding male is Ice Light. The founding female is Soup. Uh, motto, we are the warrior cooks and the battle cry whenever they kill an enemy. Bye bye now. So, they, you know, the, I think the silly ones were submitted by like Kickstarter backers or something like that when this game was still in development. Um, so they, they also made like the banner logo that you see at the top of the, the diamond on the right hand side of the screen. Um, so yeah, there's lots of with themes like you can see this one here is like a wolf's head with an arrow just underneath it. This one is like a wolf's head with some kind of uh, five leaf um, plant around it, stuff like that. This one has like an, an eye, kind of reminds me of um, what's that guy from <sighs> the Elder Scrolls, um, Hermaeus Mora. Kind of reminds me of that. This one's obviously a moon. This one's like a talon with a, a wing. Um, so there's some pretty there's some pretty good ones. Uh, this one's Battle Cry. Oora! <laughs> um, so this is just, like, you can see at the bottom left, page 5 of 12, there's 12 pages of names starting with the, with the letter A. With the letter B, there's 19 pages, 12 pages, letter C. But you get further down, some of them are short, like E. There's only five pages of house names starting with E. And then you've got only two pages of house names starting with I, so... There is a really large co collection of house names. Uh, some of them are not terribly long, like here. Uh, one page of Q. Here's one. Uh, we're going to pick the House of Quarg. Uh, the keep name is the, the Litter Box, and their battle cry is MEOW! So, that's definitely a house name we're going to go with. Oops, I did not mean to... Uh, let's clear that one. Didn't mean to do that. Whoopsie! But I think I think we're just gonna stick with random. So that's kind of that's a very very brief idea of some house names you can actually pick. Um, you know, like I said, there are some serious ones like Zelikar, keep name Zemuria, founding male Zelishium, founding female Zelka. Motto: Our honor is our strength. Battle cry: Taste our might. That sounds you know fairly thematic. And then you got some really goofy ones. Uh, Zelert, keep name Beard Son, motto Guardians of the Beard, Battle Cry, Beard Them All. So, for some pretty comical ones. We're gonna just go with some completely random ones to start things off here. Um, so, we'll confirm this, and it should jump us in. There is a brief opening cutscene, and in our first um, tactical battle, there's a lot of talking from the two main characters. So if I'm quiet for a while, just do be aware it's because I don't want to interrupt the speaking. And they explain a lot of things in the game, too. So let's confirm. And we jump in. It's taking too long. Patience. Patience. I don't see what patience has to do with this. It should have happened by now. Life keeps to its own timetable, not ours. Oh, it doesn't stop us from trying. Good morning. Your ruler has risen. Rejoice and let bellow the horns of birth. <laughs> Immortal protector of the nation, progeny of the great bloodlines, master of strategies, eternal conductor and forger of matrimony. We're here to advise you on how to handle ruling and commanding <laughs> every time. The horns of battle! Fine, we'll have to do this later. The Cadence is attacking. Heroes, jump in! The ruler will be with you shortly! And off they go. We'll explain later. We just need you to take command, because our citizens, understandably, find it hard to trust a giant talking chalice. We are not just a giant talking chalice. But the nation will listen to you, because you're of their blood. Forged from the bloodlines of the great houses. Oh, and one last thing. Unfortunately, the bloodline ritual that was used to create you also bound you to us. So you can never leave the throne. But do not despair. You can still command your heroes. Look inward, and you will find that your mind can follow them anywhere. So, not really much explanation you going see on your there, but. Yet? I yeah? Great. Now, take command and search the area. The Cadence is out there somewhere. Move the camera with the right stick. Rotate the camera by pressing left or right on the D-pad. 
This is super duper important. You, get, you do this a lot. Zoom the camera in and out by pressing up or down on the D-pad. You do that a lot too. Uh, click the right stick to center the camera on your heroes. And then press the left stick to zoom in and view information about a hero's skills and equipment. So we can click the left stick and we see all, all sorts of details about our heroes. And in this screen, you can switch between the tabs, their skills, what they can unlock uh, in the future, their current equipment, uh, their details. So this shows like... Uh, their their bloodline history for example if they have like a keep and they have a bloodline history etc but it also shows various other details their current level uh, their gender um, current experience their age which actually does matter and their two uh, main factors that uh, determine their capabilities which are their traits and their personality uh, and of course their our current status effects including their age so for example young age they have increased dexterity and fertility decreased intelligence and intuition and then once they hit like middle age they hit what's called prime age they actually have like more HP and strength and then once they're at an old age they have like decreased dexterity fertility and sight but increased intelligence and intuition just because you know like with age comes wisdom that sort of thing and then the last page we actually check out their stats so um, you can see that this person only has a base dexterity of two, but they have plus one because they're young, uh, so on and so forth. Um, things like that. Oh, they, I forgot to mention, it also meant, tells their class. So, all sorts of different skills for each class, which is pretty cool. So let's back out of this. Should be able to continue with the tutorial. Use the left stick to move the cursor to a desired location and press the A button to move your hero. So there's two sections. This is just like XCOM where you have two action points. If you move one of your heroes within this orange zone, that only takes up one action point and then they can do another action as well. Uh, if you move them all the way out here in this white zone, that's uh, dubbed sprinting and... Uh, that takes up both action points. They cannot do anything else after the fact. However, if there is an enemy within reach, um, and they're a melee, and they have a melee attack, if there is an enemy within reach, and your character can run up to them and melee them within this sprinting distance, or even, you know, I could run them all the way to this square, and if they're on any of these adjacent squares, they could still hit that enemy. Um, but anything else after that, like they, they can't use special abilities or items or anything if I move them this far. So let's just move this guy here for now. See if he can spot something. Nope. Action points. A hero has two action points to spend during their turn. You can press the Y button to forfeit all remaining action points for a hero. So if you don't want them to do anything anymore, if it's like, no, I want you to stay put, or you could just move them a little bit and then be like, okay, don't move anymore, hit the Y button, and then they stop what they're doing. Movement boundaries. Moving a hero within the colored inner boundary will use one action point and allow the hero to perform an additional action. Moving a hero within the outer dashed line boundary will use both action points and end their turn. Um, so this is basically all stuff that I'm going to... Uh, it's supplementing what I'm saying already, I suppose. So I don't want to... I don't want to move this guy over here to get line of sight down here because if there are enemies over there, I won't be able to react. Like, this guy's stuck there. Uh, I won't be able to react to uh, enemies right there just yet. I want him to, like, move out here with his first action point, spot the enemies, and then maybe move back into cover. So I'm just going to put him right up here against the wall for now. Um, and then we'll move this person over here. And I want them to stay there, so I'm going to hit the Y button. Now this person... It's a little tough to see the bottom area because I have the Twitch uh, streaming box in the way, but there are additional actions you can take at the bottom there um, beyond just, you know, moving them. Let's move this person forward just a tad. Okay, and there's nothing with the view just yet. Okay, that's good. And then this guy... I want this guy way over here. So that just used up both action points by moving that guy there. And then I'm going to put this guy here. Oh, he's drunk. Great. Uh, put that person there, and I'm going to leave them there. So I hit the Y button. So now this is like the... That was like the enemy's turn with that sound and the red um, outline, especially in the corners. Um, so that denotes the enemy's turn. Yes, Tony Not. This is a new game. 
Uh, hero selection. You can move your heroes in any order you like. You can cycle through your available heroes with left bumper and right bumper. So you don't have to go in the order that you want to. If there's a, a particular hero that you want to move and attack first, because it's like, well, this one has the lowest likelihood of killing this guy, so let's see if... Uh, because he has the lowest hit chance or something. Let's see if he kills him. And then it's like, okay, he didn't kill him. So I've got this other person who was my backup, for example. I want him to go next. Okay, so the other things that you can do are in the bottom of the screen there when you select a certain hero. Uh, you can press the left and right trigger to change between certain actions. So uh, it's tough to tell, but these guys with the, uh, the big... The giant bow thingies, over the over-the-shoulder bazooka bow, uh, these are hunters, and it goes over these in the future. Uh, hunters have an ability called uh, stealth move, and at the beginning of the game, they can go into stealth and then move next to a piece of cover that is as tall as they are, so like head height. Um, and this is how we're going to scout for enemies. So when I hit the right trigger to move to stealth move, you'll see that there's little markers on the ground, these little diamond markers showing where I can move this person to right now with a stealth move. And it's even when I move the cursor way out here. So I'm actually going to stealth move this person all the way over to here. And now that they've gone into hidden mode, so they're scouting. You can, oops, wrong person, this person. There we go. So you can see they're pretty invisible now. Which is what I want to see. Now this person, this is another hunter. Uh, it shows their class in the very bottom left when you have them selected. When I click on them it says uh, hunter just above their XP bar to the left of where it says level, like just under, just underneath their name. Uh, so I want this person to also scout a little bit, so I'm going to stealth move him up to here. Now the reason why this guy's got a weird movement line is because he's actually drunk. Uh, it's one of his personality uh, one of his personality gimmicks. He sometimes shows up to battle having drank too much, so uh, you can get used to that. And I'll get into things like personality and uh, traits and a little further on with this particular stream. Uh, they do play a very big factor in this game. And it's one of the things that I think sets it apart from something like XCOM. Uh, because with XCOM, uh, you can get a soldier like ranked up to max level to colonel to like colonel rank and stuff like that and then it's like okay sweet i got a super soldier that i can take with me on every mission till the end of the game and it's all good this game not so much because sometimes you have like you might have a high ranking person that you brought with you a lot but now and then they show up drunk or they get old and lose some of their sight and they have like really poor sight lines or really poor uh, really short range sight something like that um and this game takes a really long time in in the universe it lasts uh 300 years so your heroes actually die of old age quite regularly like almost more so than in battle if you're decent at the battles let's move this person up here still just scouting if we spot any enemies it'll it'll tell us it'll be quite obvious and because our hunters are hidden in the stealth mode they will not be we can, we can scout out enemies without them being spotted, which is what we want to do. So I'm just going to move these guys up this way. So there are three classes of heroes. You have your hunters, which are like your dexterity class. Uh, you have your caberjacks, which are your strength class. And then you have your alchemist, which is your intelligence class. So basically, um, your fighter, your rogue, and your wizard. Uh, is kind of how it goes. And they actually talk about what these different classes are a little bit further in the game once we get there. This guy has really terrible sight range. Look at that. So if we go to his stats, you can see near the bottom, his base sight, or sorry, her base sight, excuse me. Um, this, is a, this is a chick. Her base sight is 11, but it's being dropped by 8 points because uh, she is drunk, which lowers her sight. <laughs> And, yeah, it lowers her sight by a lot. So you can see that even though she's scouting, she can't see very far ahead, which is very no bueno. It's nice with having hunters with really big sight lines so you can scout out the enemy locations much more easily. Oh, there. That was actually an enemy there in the top left. You probably didn't see it. It was only for a split second. Once, once that enemy was in view, that was the only time they appeared. So uh, I don't want to move these guys way over there because then they will be in range of... The, they'll be uh, in the enemy's sight line. So I'm going to move this person here. It should be okay. Oh, no. Nope. There we are. Darren. First catch of the day. 
We can't tell you much about the Cadence because not much is known. It's old, first sighted centuries ago, and it cares only for destroying our nation with its corruption. That's where pawns like you see here come in. Think of them as attack dogs the Cadence creates to spread corruption in the world. So this person way in the back here who spotted that enemy, um, they obviously have a really long sight range. Yeah, their sight range is 11, It's and it's unhindered, so that's good. Is this PvP or just against uh, computers? It's a single-player game, buddy. But it's quite replayable, like Stellaris. Okay, so this, this hunter, she's got decent sight range, I do believe. Let's go to her stats really quick. Sight 11 plus 3, okay. So, the reason why she has enhanced sight range is if when we go to her details tab, uh, you it's something either in her traits or her personality. And it's actually her very first trait right there says Hawkeye increased sight range. Uh, so, there's two little gimmicks to your heroes as they uh, as the game progresses and as your heroes uh, are put in keeps and get married and make babies and the, continue their bloodline. Um, the parents can actually pass on traits. So, for example, if uh, Raquette Alpha, Zeda, <laughs> Alpha Zedida, if I made this Raquette Alpha Zedida uh, live in a keep to go make babies, there's a chance that she can pass on her traits of Hawkeye to increase the sight range of her children, or Quick to increase their movement range. There's also personality gimmicks that can be passed on from either parents or their trainers, which is uh, what's called a standard. That's for something later. Haven't played Stellaris in forever. Well, that's unfortunate, Tony Not I've been playing it actually quite a bit, uh, a little bit every day for the last little while. So the personality of Raquette is she's also a reveler. Sometimes she'll come into battle uh, drunk or hungover. In this case, she's hungover, not drunk like uh, the other person. Uh, way too much last night, lowered speed, evasion, and hit points. So that's too bad. Uh, she's also cocky, which is lowered evasion when at max health. And she's sluggish, reduced evasion against ranged attacks. So her evasion is total shit right now. It's actually minus 14%. That is not good. Okay, so we're going to get her to move... Uh, stealth move over to here. And if I can get her to spot that enemy... Nah, didn't see it. Okay, that's fine. Let's have her go around the corner here to see if any enemies are down this hallway to the right. Just in case. I don't want my guys charging in there and winding up in a little trap. Okay, so she sees that enemy. So that's what I want. Now, that is... That's a little uh, enemy right there. The nice thing about this game that I like much more over XCOM is that you see that little arrow symbol uh, that is next to its HP bar? Um, it's going to disappear right there. It's visible. It's not visible. What that means is uh, it's telling me where if I move this current hero to this square, it cannot shoot that enemy. However, if I put it on this square, it can shoot it. And it can still shoot it on any of these squares over here because he has line of sight and it's uh, within range. And if I move the cursor close enough, there, there will be an actual eyeball symbol, which means this hero can actually see that enemy. Now remember, this guy has really short sight range, so I gotta move him super close for this hero. Uh, to move in close enough. But let's try and kill that thing just with a single shot. So I'm going to try and keep him back here as far away as possible. So I think this square is where I want to shoot from, like this or this square, because he's got a line of sight and uh, can hit it from back here. But we'll see what his hit ratio is. Um, move the cursor over at 67%. Eh, not a good hit ratio, but he'll do anywhere between 8 and 11 damage, which is what we need to kill that thing. So let's move him over there. And now, let's get him to shoot it. And he missed. Damn it, haven't had time to put a good game in. <laughs> Attacking! Your hero's chance to hit is shown next to the enemy's hit point flag. Ranged attacks can miss their targets completely. Melee attacks will never miss, but can sometimes glance for greatly reduced damage. So, um, with the hunters, which have the bazooka bows, they can miss and do zero damage. Uh, your melee characters, which are your other ones, your alchemists and your caberjacks that both have melee attacks, they will always do damage when they do a melee attack. However, uh, if they can do a glancing blow and it will only do like 2 or 3 points of damage as opposed to like 15 or whatever. So let's continue. Um, 
So that that didn't do us any good, unfortunately. Let's get these guys to uh, just move in a little bit closer. That person is still out of range there. Uh, this guy is moving in. This guy's actually, he's got two skills because he's level two. Some of your heroes at the beginning of the game, they start at level two, which is pretty helpful. They get an extra skill. Let's move the alchemist in a bit closer too. There we go. Okay, so he can't actually see any of our heroes, which is fine. Impressionable. So that was some that was a piece of personality that uh or sorry, that's a trait that this person had. Impressionable. Personality is strongly influenced by other heroes in combat. There is a lot of different kinds of traits and personalities that uh your heroes can acquire. Uh, that trait impressionable, this hero can pick up uh, personality points from other heroes when it's in battle. So this can actually be like a powerful combination. He could get good things like Tranquil, with in which increases accuracy. Or he could get crappy things where he also becomes a reveler and shows up to the next battle drunk or something. You know. Things. Okay, so I'm going to move this person... Uh, so that I need to keep this person within line of sight. So I'm going to move her here. She can still see the enemy. But I want this guy here, the same guy who missed the last shot, I want him to move here where he will have a shot. So let's stealth move him here. And he still has a shot on that enemy. So let's do this again. 67% missed. That's okay. So I'll go back to the other hunter that we moved first, Raket. Let's get her to shoot it. Also 67%. Missed again. Jesus. This is going real well. Okay, so I'm going to... Huh. Do I want to... No, I can't. Can I? I don't... Okay, I'm just going to move this guy in and take a peek. Oh, hello. Seeds. Arguably the lowliest of pawns are more nuisance than menace. But if you're going to remember one thing, don't let those runts form a posse. Keep them apart. Otherwise, it'll be like when caber jacks get together at a tavern. Except not the best night of your life. Okay, so we found another enemy. This is a seed. And, yeah, it can be a problem when they're together. Okay, so my guy is... I don't really want him here to take two hits from seeds. So, uh, the cool thing about caber jacks is... Uh, their base skill is knockback. It's a lower damage attack, but it knocks back and stuns enemies. And the other thing, too, is that I can line it up. See, by moving the cursor here, it's like, oh yeah, you'll attack him like this. If I can hit him from here, I'll knock this seed back in this direction towards the wall. And, you know, it'll be stunned and it'll take damage. In fact, it'll probably kill it. But I can use, I can highlight the cursor over the seed that I wanted to hit and press the X button to change his position. If I get him to hit from here, from this one, he'll knock this guy back into the other dude and actually stun both of them. It's a 77% chance of hitting this, uh, so let's give it a shot. Oh shit. There we go. So the first guy died. One down, untold millions to go. Lapses. Cadence cowards. They'd rather stay back and snipe at you than fight up close. Be wary. If your heroes are hit, they may forget some of their combat training. The mind is just as vulnerable as the body. So one of the other cool things about uh, this game, and I think they did really well in a couple other games that Double Fine has done, like uh, Iron Brigade that I mentioned earlier, uh, enemy design is pretty awesome. So these lapses, uh, they're a ranged enemy. Uh, Every enemy in this game has a special gimmick about them, uh, which is pretty crazy. These seeds, uh, they're, they're kind of weak, but uh, their special thing is that uh, when they hit a hero of yours and damage one of your heroes, they actually regen HP. Um, so that's something that the seeds do. Uh, the lapses, they're a ranged enemy, so they can attack at range. If they hit uh, one of your heroes... Uh, they do a decent amount of damage, but they your heroes also lose a little bit of their XP, so they can actually de-level uh, by getting hit from a lapse, which really, really sucks. Um, and the other thing, too, is when a lapse dies, it actually sets off like a small explosion, which knocks back nearby um, anything. Uh, any other Cadence 
creatures or even your heroes, they get knocked back about one square. So it can lead to some accidental stuns. Uh, like you can get a hero to kill this lapse, and then it explodes and knocks your hero back into the wall and stuns it for the next turn. And you're like, oh shit, I just lost that hero for a turn. That's not good. And no, it is not good. Okay, so this guy is stunned. I don't need to worry about him. The thing I'm worried about right now is this lapse. She's going to take a shot at uh, this guy here who got that kill. So the reason why that first seed got killed is because despite the knockback only doing about 6 damage, uh, when you knock uh, an enemy into an object, either another enemy or a wall or something, they actually take more damage, which is pretty cool. So the harder the knockback is, uh, the more damage they'll take from it. So let's move the alchemist up to here. I'm going to show his special ability in a little bit here. And then we, the other caper jack, I'm going to want to be pretty close because he's also got a knockback. I'm going to want to stun that lapse. I don't think I'll be able to kill her in a single turn. There's another seed. So she's going to try to shoot him. Damn it. That could have been worse. At least they belong to heroic bloodlines. Oh yes, we forgot to mention. Normal humans cannot survive even a single touch from the Cadence. But because the bloodlines of your heroes are attuned to us and have our power flowing through them, they have a fighting chance. So this Caberjack, he has a second skill because he's actually level two. He's got the first skill that I'll... Or sorry, she. I kept saying, I kept saying he, but it's a she. <laughs> uh, she has charge, uh, which is a really cool ability. Uh, she dashes in a straight line um, and runs into whatever the hell's in her way. So uh, from whatever, wherever she's positioned from, she can run in a straight line in any of the eight directions and run into whatever is in the way. It could be a hero, so I could actually hit this alchemist and knock him out of the way. Um, it could be another enemy where I'll hit them, do damage, and knock them back. Or it could just be, you know, I could use it to make her run a really long way in a very short amount of time. That's actually a use for it as well. Uh, so let's try something else here. I'm going to move this alchemist forward. So I mentioned the icon about uh, the hunters being able to shoot things with their bow. You can see that other icon where there's the eye so that this guy can see them. He's within, uh, he will be within their... Uh, sorry, the enemies will be within his sight range, but there's also that other icon, which is he can throw a flask on him. So the alchemist is kind of your area of effect nuker. Let's move him forward. Um, they don't actually have magic. They have these things. They're, they are explosive flasks, which do area damage in differing sizes. Uh, so in this case, it's the area of impact and every square uh in all eight directions around it. So it's, it's a very small amount of uh, AoE, but it's AoE damage. Uh, so uh, they also have a chance to hit the target, which uh, gets lower the farther away the target is. So this is kind of a... This is a 50-50 chance that I'll fuck this up. And, it, you know, when, when an alchemist misses a flask throw, it's possible that they throw it, like, in a completely different direction, like right on top of one of your heroes or some shit. So... There is friendly fire, so let's give this a shot. Yep. Missed, but still killed that son of a bitch. That's fine. Or is it? Uh, I don't know. That might have actually screwed us. Because now I can't knock back a seed into this lapse. Shit. Yeah, that might have actually screwed us a little bit. Huh. Oh, well. Okay, so I've got this hunter here. I'm just going to get him to uh, stealth move... Over to here. I don't know why I'm doing stealth move. It's just habit. I'll get him to move here and take a shot at this guy. There we go. Finally. Okay. So I wanted him to get the kill shot on that because he needed 10 more exp experience points to level up. Uh, hero skills. Your hero's skills are located along the bottom of the screen. Use the left or right trigger to select a skill. Select a target with the left stick and perform the skill using the A button. Many skills have cooldowns or limited uses, so use them wisely. So, the, for example, the knockback that I used on this character, um, it has a one-turn cooldown when you use it, so I can't use it again this turn. And then the alchemist, um, it's flasks. I can only use that five times in a single game. Um, so that's, those are things. It's kind of a way of balancing it out. And there's just, it's similar when you get items later on in the game, too. You can use items only a certain amount of times. 
Uh, I'm going to get this hunter to move over to here so that she's within sight of these other enemies. Okay, that's another enemy over there. All right, things are getting pretty dicey. But I think we can... Okay, so what I'm going to do here... It's kind of unfortunate that that seed just flat out died. I should have done the stun first. That's okay. So I'm a little... I kind of ruined that a little bit. What I should have done is moved this character. I'm going to move her right here. And I'm going to use her other skill, Charge. Now the nice thing about Charge is that it never misses. It's always 100%. Whatever she runs into, she always hits, she always does damage. The problem is that because we killed that seed, I can't knock the seed into the laps and stun both of them. That would have been a guaranteed stun. In this case, I have to hope against hope that she flies far enough back to hit a wall or something and stun her. I don't think that's going to be the case, but let's do it anyways. Here we go. Boof! She went pretty far. That was a very bad idea. Son of a bitch. Okay, we need to get everybody close enough that they can attack these enemies because th this person that I just used charge with is going to get absolutely swarmed. Oh, that's a lucky miss. Whew. On the plus side, uh, she'll have her knockback. I've got my other Caberjack with knockback as well. Uh, so we've got stuns galore that are going to be ready in the next turn. Please miss. Shit. It's not so much the damage I'm worried about, it's the loss of XP. That's the real... Uh, that's the real kicker with these lapses. Sucks. It sucks. Okay, can this guy get close enough and use a knockback attack on a lapse? No. This guy... You know what? Um, okay. I have an idea. So I'm going to use knockback on... How am I going to do this? So this guy... Can I get him to shoot this other lapse? No. Can't get close enough. Can't get close enough to anybody. What about this person? Can she get close enough? Oh, oh, he leveled up. That's right. Okay, so because because this hunter leveled up, she's got her first hunter skill beyond the stealth moves. She's got follow-up. Grants a quick hip fire crossbow shot for 50% damage if the first shot hits. So it's like a double shot. So if I can get her to uh, hit this target. Okay, here we go. Let's stealth move her here. She's drunk, of course. So I'm going to use that new skill she just got, which is follow-up. And I'm going to shoot it at this lapse. Now, her basic attack, 80% uh, chance to hit 10 to 13 damage. So she can hit, she can high roll that damage and deal 13 damage and leave the lapse with only three more hit points. And then she gets a second shot, uh, which is very likely to kill it. Um... So let's try this follow-up. Go first shot. Boop. Nice hit. Follow-up. Got her. Nice. That worked out. So one lapse down. Attack icons. As you select a potential movement location for a hero, helpful icons appear on the enemy's HP flags. Uh, the arrow icon. Your hero could perform a direct ranged attack on the enemy from this tile. Uh, the little... Um, arch icon, your hero could throw a flask at the enemy from this tile, and the eye is your hero will be able to see the enemy from this tile. I explained that earlier myself. Yeah, you have Probably should just let the game... Attacking at close range is good, but attacking from afar, where one can think and plan, is better. If you listen closely, you might be able to hear your group leaving you behind as you line up that perfect shot. Actually, the hunter will be in front of the group, stealthily scouting ahead. Is that what they say they're doing? Yes, it is what they say they're doing. <laughs> this is a caber jack. They hit things with a caber. Sometimes they hit hard and put things down. Other times they hit not so hard and just knock things out. That's all you're going to say? Simplest way of life there is. Caber jacks. Profound purveyors of violence. Ah, you found one of our alchemists. A brilliant mind in a delicate body. Not worth much in a close quarters battle, but they make up for it with their nasty exploding flasks. Just watch out for friendly fire. The explosions are big, so aim well, or keep your heroes back. Trust us, you don't want to be on the receiving end of one of their concoctions. 
Is there different maps? Yes, there is, Tony. Not it. It depends on where the battle is taking place. Uh, on on the mo uh, once we get through this battle, it's taking me a while because I'm doing a lot of talking. Once we get through this battle, though, I'll show you the world map. And depending on where your country is being invaded, the map is different. Like it has a different kind of aesthetic. It has a different kind of layout. Uh, unfortunately, there is like a limited pool of the map layout itself, but some of the things are kind of procedurally generated on it, like the location of certain, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, certain like obstacles and whatnot uh, will be different, and where the enemies are will be different, where your heroes start will be different. I don't mind your talking, game seems interesting. Oh, thanks. Okay, um, so... There's a high chance that I can get this person to just walk up to this lapse and kill it. Uh, there's also a good chance... Yeah, at 17 to 21 damage for 85%. I could just use the knockback to stun it, but that would probably also kill it. So I'm just going to flat out uh, kill it with a regular attack. So let's get the Caber Jack to do this. And fun fact, the Caber is a real thing. It's a, a big log with handles, and you hit things with it. It's a real thing. <laughs> Uh, who makes it? Uh, this is a game by Double Fine. So we'll just do a regular attack with the Caber Jack. The Caber Jacks tend to do, like, high damage uh, with their melee attacks. So if this person doesn't get a bl glancing blow, this lapse will die. So let's do that. Got her. And then she explodes and knocks him back. Luckily, there was nothing behind her. So nothing bad happened. Okay, so... What I want to do is, these three guys are grouped up really tight, so this is perfect for our alchemist, but I think the best square for him to be is right here next to this pillar. Uh, however, we've got this guy on top of that square, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this guy out of the way a little bit, but just enough so that he's still in range to use a knockback attack on at least two of these seats in case the alchemist flask uh, fucks up and he doesn't, he doesn't kill them or he doesn't kill all of them. Or whatever. So let's move him here. For now. Uh, we'll get back to him in a second. Let's move the alchemist right up here. And then the alchemist can just throw a flask and kill all three of these guys in a single go. So let's find the optimal impact point where he'll still hit all three of them, but with the most accuracy. So right here, 71% chance. Let's do it. Send them back to that Boom! From Wednesday, Kate. Got him! That went better than I expected. Well done. Well done. I knew you'd have a knack for this. I wonder if it's on PlayStation. Um, it should be. I don't think it was an exclusive or anything like that. So, uh, your heroes also gain XP at the end of the mission, so they can still level up, not just from kills, which is kind of nice. So, our alchemist leveled up. And they got their first skill, which is free throw. This is a quick flask throw that doesn't cost an action point. So it's possible that your alchemist can actually throw two flasks in a single turn with the free throw ability. The free throw does have a cooldown, though, so you can't just, you know, blindly nuke things. Plus, you also have to consider that uh, up until they get to, like, level 10 with the uh, Mad Bomber skill, which doubles the amount of flasks they carry up to 10, uh, the free throw, you can really only use it twice uh, to... Or, sorry, you can only throw five flasks in a single mission. So the free throw is probably only going to be useful to throw two flasks. You can only really do that twice in an entire mission. So let's get him to learn free throw. That's done. And then this person, one of our caber jacks, they leveled up too. This is the other caber jack. He's the guy that pummeled one of the dudes. Uh, he got charge. So we're good there. Is there a bunch of factions? Um... I'm not sure what you mean by factions. If you mean factions as in enemies, uh, there really only is the Cadence enemies, but there's a really big variety of Cadence enemies, and partway through the game, they actually get tougher. Uh, so that's it for this mission. Let's go ahead and proceed. There will be more talking from the giant talking chalice. Right. So this is our nation, and as we said, we are not in the best of shape. That muck you see surrounding us is the Cadence. It's what created the pawns, corrupted our lands, and is slowly tightening on us like a noose. But we do have one advantage. 
Thanks to several enchanted materials that make up our body, we've been endowed with certain powers. One of them being a way to cleanse the Cadence from this world. It's really quite a miraculous process, wherein we harness the properties of- The thing is, it takes a long time for us to charge up for this. A long time. All of the heroes you just commanded in battle will be long gone when we're finally ready. And with all that time still ahead, we need you to protect us. You will take charge of the nation, command its citizens worthy of becoming heroes, and ensure that the Cadence does not reach the capital. Now let's check out that keep you just saved. So, in the uh, in this world map, uh, there's five areas. To the east here is like a marsh. At the bottom here, I believe it's called Ebbet Marsh, is in these two zones. Uh, in the bottom, in these two zones, is the salt stacks. In the lower left area, I believe these are the Cinderlands. And then the top left here, this is... Um, it's a desert. I forget what the hell it's called. The Pale Sea. That's what it's called. Uh, it's a desert kind of area. And then at the top right is a place called the Augers, which is uh, a weird one. You've got like these weird um, kind of Easter Island Moai along with just some uh, autumn trees. Um, A-U-T-U-M-N, like fall trees. Um, so you've got the five different zones. So if, there's, if you're in a battle in one of these zones, there's different gimmicks to each one. Like the pale sea in the desert there's like these little bushes that explode if they take damage and they hurt everything around them uh in the cinder lands in the lower left here there's these geysers which shoot up uh some smoke into the sky and they actually block line of sight uh and then down here in the salt stacks there's these rocks that you can actually uh, use as cover but then you can also hit them to partially damage them and then they're just partial cover you can still shoot through them with it like a hunter or something uh, you can actually destroy them but you can also knock them back as well stun things with them blah 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 okay so our first keep you every game you start you get a keep and you have to use this keep very wisely so we need to visit the keep we need to marry two heroes bloodline forgers of the nation the stonemasons did good work here I'll thank them later. Here, you will appoint one hero as a regent, and one as a partner. And the more experience they have, the more they'll pass on to their children. That goes for traits and personalities, too. Everything's game. And keep in mind, assigning heroes to keeps retires them from combat. You can't have one foot at home and one in the battlefield. Okay, so... Uh, as they said, you need to appoint somebody as the regent, and you need to give them a partner to make babies with. This continues the bloodline of this house, so that they can, so that you know they're supplying you with new heroes. It's like they said, the heroes that we have right now, they'll be long dead by the time the game ends because uh, the in-game time is 300 years to to charge up the chalice. So these heroes that are like age 16 and whatnot, they'll be dead by the time they're like 60, 70 years old if they don't die in combat. Um, so you need more heroes to replenish them uh, throughout the entire game. So there's two things to look at. Uh, on the right-hand side there, you see fertility. Uh, and the other thing to look at is uh, experience. So like the level of the heroes that you're appointing as the regents and the partners. The higher the level that you are appointing as regents and partners, the more experience they will pass on to their children, so their children will come out higher levels than um, what you were previously used to. So it's entirely possible that you can actually have like higher, high level regents and partners, but their, their children, once they're done through training and you can use them in combat, they, co they come out an even higher level. So right now, the highest levels we have are level twos. Uh, you can also see that there's one, two, three, four, and there should be a fifth one, this guy here. The ones that say Vanguard, those are the five heroes we just used in combat. So I cannot use them in combat again if we appoint one of them as the regent or a partner. So we have a couple things to consider here. Uh, experience, fertility, and class. That is another super important thing. Um, the kind of house that you appoint to a keep 
as as the regent. The class of the hero that you appoint as regent determines the class that that keep will produce from that uh, from that house indefinitely, uh, unless you know all those heroes die or something, and that house dies off, whatever. So if I appoint, say, this alchemist, uh, Molly Gray, as the regent for this keep, then every baby and trainee hero that eventually graduates and I can use in combat, they will be an alchemist uh, from that point onward. So this house will be an alchemist house. So I gotta be really cautious about what I pick. The other thing to look at too is, like I said, traits, because traits are genetic and they are passed on. So uh, this chick with her Hawkeye and Quick traits, those are actually really, really good. Uh, increased sight range and increased movement range is always nice. So. I could use her as a regent or even a partner and she could pass on these traits to her children. However, I can't use her in combat when I do that. So having a hero having a hero with those traits in combat is pretty kick ass. Uh, but I think having those traits passed on to her children would be even better. So I'm probably going to use her in this particular keep. Now, the, it, there is a chance that some heroes can be infertile, like this Model Gray. Um, there's also Mathis Gray, and the one near the top, uh, Quint Havis. They can have low fertility, um, either just from like a certain kind of uh, personality, e either from a trait or a personality gimmick that they that they have, or they can just have low fertility because, you know, they're old, for example. So we need to try to pick somebody with average fertility, with a class that I definitely want to make sure that we have for portions of the game and we want to take a look at some of their traits and personality uh, gimmicks child tendency daughters that's not too bad um, I never really got a good look at our vanguard this person dim-witted lower intelligence low fertility decreased chance to have children hardy increased max HP so not really somebody I want to be using as regent or a partner this person heart disease reduced lifespan bear strength increased strength and quick increased movement range so both of those are pretty damn good um she's female though so i can't combine her with the other female hunter that also has the quick uh, trait that's unfortunate uh this one is the one that gets drunk she's a reveler she's also nearsighted no wonder her sight range was so terrible she was drunk, and she's nearsighted. Oh my god. She's impressionable. She has bare strength for increased strength. Man, this is not a terribly good hero, but I would not want her passing that stuff on. Let's take a look at this guy. Puny, decreased strength. That's not good. For a Caberjack, you want them to have increased strength, because uh, when you go to their stats, you see how the strength portion has like a little yellow bar around it? Caber jacks do more damage the higher their strength is. So pass, having a caber jack family that has, you know, reduced strength passed them down their, through their family, that's not good. Nimble, increased dexterity, that would be good for hunters. Child tendency, sons. Increased chance of having boys. Eh, that's not too bad. It'd be good to combine with that hunter chick. Personality, stalwart. This hero's defensive bearing increases armor effectiveness. That's actually not bad. It's not a huge bonus. It's only plus one armor, but hey, more armor is more armor. So I could use him and this chick who has Hawkeye and Quick. So he could also pass on the increase to Dexterity, and that would actually be a pretty good Hunter family. Hmm. That's something to think about. There's a lot of thought that goes into this, as you can see. Uh, this guy, Impressionable, Bear Strength, so increased Strength, but Sickly for reduced max HP. That's too bad. Rebel personality traits run counter to those of parents and trainers. Yeah, I don't want to pass that on. Reckless, this hero's careless manner decreases armor effectiveness. That's not good. Um, impressionable, clumsy, decreased dexterity. <laughs> Child tendency daughters. That's not too bad. So I think what I'm going to do is, like I said, we're going to use this Caberjack guy. We're going to make him the partner because I want to make sure that we have hunters. Uh, because hunters are super, super handy. Uh, you always want scouts. So, uh, Raket Alpha Zedida, uh, she's going to be the regent because she has two really good um, genetic traits, Hawkeye and Quick. Uh, unfortunately, her personality things are not that good. Reveler, Cocky, and Sluggish, those are all three of them are pretty terrible. But 
Let's select her, make her the regent. Now that your regent Point. is appointed, it's time to decide on a partner. Although this isn't an arrangement out of love, who knows? Maybe it'll turn into that. We've seen it happen. Personality, traits, experience, they're all important here. But just because this is an arrangement of necessity doesn't mean you should reduce these heroes to a pile of numbers either. They deserve better than that. Uh, no, they don't. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> These partnerships are baby factories, nothing more. <laughs> okay, so once you appoint the regent, it orders the of other available heroes to make their partner in terms of the odds of them having children. So the chance for children with these top couple uh, male heroes is super high. Uh, this person is just high. And then these low fertility males, the chance for children is moderate. The other thing you might notice is that it says the trainee class is something different from a hunter. There are hybrid classes in this game too. So whenever you, if I was to give this person, if I was to give her a partner who was also a male hunter, then their babies would be hunters, just straight up hunters. However, because these two guys at the top are caber jacks, it would be a hunter caber jack hybrid which is the Enforcer. Or I could give her a uh, an Alchemist partner, and then she's a Hunter-Alchemist uh, hybrid. The, the babies aren't Hunter-Alchemist Hunter hybrid class. So there's a lot of mix and match here, which is pretty cool. They still have some uh, similar skills and whatnot, but there's a lot of differences. Like the Enforcer has uh, like a knockback arrow, for example. Uh, they can still stealth move, but they ha they don't have like the double shot, which was the follow up. They have like a knockback arrow instead. Um, they can get other skills like caber jack related skills, like things that get make them knock back immune or something like that. Blah 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 blah. Anyway, so this guy, clumsy, decreased dexterity and slow, decreased movement range. That is awful. So we're gonna yeah, like we said. This guy, he's puny for decreased strength, which is bad because enforcers also get more damage from higher strength. But he's got nimble, increased dexterity. So maybe their kids will have the nimble trait, which is good for hunters. It increases their... Um, it increases the damage of the hunters if they hit the target. So let's go ahead and, and confirm, make him the partner. The Codex. Are you sure you wish to marry Raquette Alpha Zedida and Eloy Doberfran? This choice is final and cannot be reverted. Yes, it is. Um, like you got to, you got to put a lot of thought into this. It's pretty crazy. Chance for children super high, which is what you want, uh, like all the time. And the training class will be Enforcer, which is a hunter type. So any of these babies that in the future when their mom dies and I appoint a new regent I can make the regent an enforcer and if I make their partner another hunter either either a hunter or also an enforcer or a trick shot which are the which you know they're all the hunter main class then the babies will be a pure hunter yet again Many happy so returns. Right. let's give the newlyweds some privacy eh yeah they need all the privacy they can get because they need to get fucking. <laughs> All right, let's get it's out of here. It's a lot to take in, but you'll handle it, or your mind will become as cracked as our body. You'll be fine. Now then, please join us back at the capital so we can show you some of your other responsibilities. So they're probably going to tell us about researching new things. So at the same time as when time progresses, uh, you're... Um, your heroic houses, they're trying to make babies together, uh, but at the same time, you are completing research projects. So let's take a look at that. And welcome back. You are here, right? It's a little hard to tell if you're still in your mind's eye or whatever. This is where your heroes return to after battle. From here, you may equip them with any skills or weapons they may have earned, as well as perform research. Basically, we can devote some of our power to help the war effort and the nation. Whether it's building new keeps, starting a Sage Rites Guild, or a Standards Crucible. Fun stuff. Okay, so uh, we can take a look at our list of heroes in this second option. And this is all of our currently alive heroes in the active section. But it also breaks it down by various 
um, sections. So Regency, every Regent and partner that is currently assigned. Your Standards, which are like trainers for babies. Sage Rites, which um, they're like your researchers. Your trainees are your babies who are not yet read for, not yet ready for, or babies and adolescents who are not yet ready for active duty, and then deceased. This line, this list becomes extremely long as the game progresses. Your heroes die, like all of them die. <laughs> so we'll be looking at the list of heroes pretty regularly. Um, so we need to take a look at our research. Hmm. Building more keeps is likely the most pressing option, as you'll be able to foster more bloodlines, but. Don't shun the other possibilities. With your approval, we can research weapons, potions, armor, and if the amount of time required dissuades you from researching something, consider the Sage Rites Guild. Any hero who joins the Sage Rites will hasten the time required for any pursuit. They will never see combat again. Keep in mind, most of our power is focused on charging up to cleanse the Cadence so we can only devote enough energy to research one thing at a time. That includes searching for new heroes. It takes a lot of effort to find people attuned with us, and it'll only get harder the more we do it. But choose whatever you want. So the three types of buildings, we can build a keep, which is to create another bloodline to try and make more babies. Uh, the Sage Rites Guild, which allows us to appoint up to three heroes as a Sage Rite, and Depending on uh, various stats, they will reduce research time by varying amounts. And lastly, as I said, a crucible to appoint what's called a standard, which is like a trainer for your babies and adolescents. Uh, the higher levels, the higher the levels of your standards, the more XP they pass on to your trainees. So your trainees actually, you know, become higher level when they come of age. Uh, there's also various items and equipment that we can research as well we can look at armor so we can get better basic armor for our all of all three of our classes um but you can also get some special armors from various enemies so for example for veil armor uh the skin of lapses exhibits some extraordinary illusionary properties with enough residue with enough residue excuse me collected from their bodies we could fashion a suit of armor that will improve the stealth abilities of our hunters the Twitch app just died on me. Hang on, let me reboot it. Make sure I can see you guys in chat. Let's do this. Open it up. JB, Tony Knot, hope you guys are still there. Alright. So, this is actually a pretty good research project, but we don't have enough uh, dead lapses to use up. So, if we had, say, 20 lapse kills, we could use up 16 of those to research this veil armor. And then if there was another... Uh, item that required lapse corpses, we'd be knocked back down to four and have to get some more again. So that's um, that's a thing. It's just like XCOM. Um, you can get advanced weapon training, which is, you know, akin to... Hey, JB. Thanks. Uh, advanced weapon training improves the, like, the damage that will be dealt from the various weapons uh, by the classes. Um, but you can also get some special weapons, again, from the corpses of enemies. Items, uh, some basic items, the health vial, which is like the healing item, the Vitaliband, which boosts max HP, Steady Hander, increases accuracy, and then there, it's actually a pretty long list of special items that you can get as the game progresses uh, from killing enemies. So the Sponge Stone, this one's pretty good. The seeds seem to leech some of their victim's life force which with each annoying headbutt. We're certain that it may be possible to imbue a small stone with the ability to steal health from the Cadence during combat. So the Sponge Stone is actually really good because anytime you're, uh, when you equip it to a hero, anytime that hero does damage, uh, they heal back some health if, they've ta if they have taken some damage. The Experience Scarf uh, boosts the XP that your hero will gain every time they kill an enemy or complete a mission, so it's pretty good for power leveling your heroes. And then Haste Hooch, this requires a lot of dead seeds. Um, using Haste Hooch increases the movement speed of your heroes. So that was pretty cool. And then we've got some hero research projects. We can adopt a baby girl or a baby boy. Um, and these are for when, like, you have, uh, you have a, a house that hasn't had any babies in it either a really long time, or you have appointed a regent and partner and say one of them is infertile or 
uh, they're the same they're the same gender so they cannot um, they cannot have babies or maybe there's just a regent there with no partner but it's like I need to continue their bloodline so let's have them adopt a baby um, so you can do that and then discovering new heroes uh, gives you a batch of brand new heroes completely randomized they'll have random everything uh, and random house names so like the long ass list of house names if you want to get a very huge um, stew of uh, various house names in your heroes retinue you use discover new heroes a lot and then there's bonuses to your nation there's, there's not very many of these but for example the hero discovery boost is the first one we can get there are volumes of ancient texts about the chalice and its powers lying in the capital basements and we have good reason to believe that translating them could lead to finding more experienced heroes this increases the level of discovered heroes by two so right now i think if we did the uh oops right now i think if we did the discover new heroes they'd pretty much all be like level one but we could use the hero discovery boost and they would come in as like level 3, maybe level 4, I'm not too sure. Um, so the thing about researching uh, what the refined armors or the advanced training is that completing one of them reduces the time to complete the other two um, consecutively. However, constructing buildings, every time we build a keep, the time to construct the next trick keep takes more time. Um, the time it takes to build a Sage Rites Guild is increased with each Sage Rites Guild we have. Same with a Crucible. The first Crucible will be, you know, 13 years, but the next one will be significantly longer, so on and so forth. Uh, so, more importantly than anything, we need to get our Bloodlands going, especially with the three different uh, types of classes. So, we're going to build another Keep. The only way to ensure that our most powerful bloodlines survive is through keeps. By marrying heroes together as regent and partner, the bloodlines have a chance to continue through generations to come. The cost for building keeps increases which, with each construction. We're going to confirm this. And we need to select an area. Placing a building. There is an inner region and an outer region to uh, each of the five areas. Select a region to begin construction of a building. Outer regions are the first to be attacked and corrupted by the Cadence, but they offer significant strategic and tactical bonuses when you build there. Uh, so this is actually true. So in this region, constructing a building here in this portion of the Pale Sea would not do anything. However, constructing a building in this portion would give our alchemists a bonus to intelligence for as long as we have this region uncorrupted and there is a structure in it. Uh, what would this one be? Um, reduced construction time for constructing a building here. Um, this one would be, if we construct a building here, all of our heroes have a bonus to kill XP, which is pretty, pretty, pretty big. Uh, this one would increase the research speed of a local Sage Rites Guild. And this one would increase the dexterity or their damage of all of our hunters and the various hybrid class, uh, hunter hybrid classes. Uh, by a small amount. Increased dexterity is good. So two things. The plus kill XP is quite good, and the plus research with a local guild is quite good. But I think what I'm going to do... Uh, I'll start with this one here. The plus kill XP. And then after that, we'll go to this one, which is reduced construction time. So let's do this. The plus kill XP is actually quite huge. Uh, if we can get our heroes... Uh, leveling up faster in this earlier portions of the game, that's good. It'll pay off immensely in the future portions of the game. However, oh, yeah. by One building... By... The end of this war mm -hmm. is not even a glimpse on our horizon yet, but your immortality gives us an advantage. The ability to step back and let time pass. You can start and stop this timeline at will, but we'll also stop it for you should something require your attention. Like a Cadence attack. That is a probable possibility. So, once you've made all your decisions, you've got your next research project going, uh, your heroes are equipped with all your the latest and greatest gear, ready for battle and stuff like that, you just sit back, you let time pass, and you hit the right trigger. And you can see upcoming events in 300 years is when the chalice is charged. And anything else above that is, is like your research project, that's the five years, 219 days that it's showing, for example. Uh, so we just hit right trigger and time passes. There we go. The horns of birth. A cause for celebration indeed. 
babies have been born before today. And it was glorious every time, was it not? What, unbearable shrieking and smells that are even worse? That's your idea of glorious. Yes. <laughs> so, babies, heroic children known as trainees, are bound to the keep they are birthed in. They are trained by the regent and partner in that keep until they are 15, at which point they are transferred to the capital for active duty. And that's when we can use them in combat, or appoint them as a standard, or appoint them as a regent, appoint them as a partner, appoint them as a sage right, whatever. So let's hit the A button. So this is our first baby. Damn it. She did not get good she did not get good traits. So when a baby is born, uh, they inherit genetic traits from their parents. So she got Hawkeye for increased sight range. However, she's dim-witted, so she has lower intelligence, which isn't too bad um, because she's a she's a hunter class. However, puny decreased strength, that's not very good. Uh, because for an enforcer, she actually gets bonus damage from strength and dexterity. So having a reduction to strength isn't that great, but it's not a big deal. So this baby is going to stay in the keep, and we can't d use them for anything until they hit uh, age 15. Uh, once they hit age 15 and are put, um, and once they are put into active duty, that is when they will inherit uh, their various various personality gimmicks. They can inherit personality gimmicks from their parents uh, and from their trainer or standards uh, that you have appointed. So. A big thing is appointing standards with good personality gimmicks. All right, this one's defective. Chuck her off the cliff. <laughs> nah, it's, it's good enough. I, I do like Hawkeye. Increased sight range is actually really good uh, on any hero, and I appreciate it very much. And since she's a hunter, she's a scout, so that'll, that'll pay dividends in the future. All right, let's back out of this. So we still have three years and some 200 days before the keep is finished construction. So we back out of that and we just hit the right trigger again. And we let time pass. Another baby was born. It always feels weird accomplishing something without having beaten it into submission. Hmm. Should have seen my books after I was done with them. Okay, so we've completed our research, which was constructing a new keep. So we're going to marry some heroes together. Now we've got a, so we've got a bloodline for a hunter class. So we need either a caberjack or an alchemist uh, bloodline going here. Um, see this chick, she has heart disease, which reduces her lifespan, but she has bare strength, which increases her strength, and she has quick, which increases movement range by plus one square. Uh, both of those are still good, especially for a caberjack. So I'm going to go ahead. She's 37, though. That's kind of old, especially with heart disease. Shit. Uh, let's take a look at the other Caber Jacks for a second. This guy, strong-willed. Personality is not influenced by p parents or other trainers. That doesn't matter. Uh, nimble, increased dexterity. Eh. Kind of moot. Slow, decreased movement range. I am not a fan of that. Personality, rebel, cocky, and pack hunter. Eh. What about this one? She got nearsighted, decreased sight range. <laughs> Nimble, increased dexterity. That's not too bad. Uh, oops, what did I just do? There we go. Uh, she's a lone wolf. Increased stats when no allies are nearby. This guy's infertile, so... Or, sorry, that chick is infertile, but I want to use her. Anton Havis. Oh, this is the clumsy and slow dude. Uh, Todd F. Command. He has low fertility, though. <laughs> Low fertility, but he is nimble, increased dexterity, and he's a quick study, so he gets more XP. That's actually pretty good. And he's stalwart, too. Increased defensive um, bearing. That's not too bad. Uh, let's check out the next caber jack, which is this guy, Eris Doberfran. Hmm. I think I'm just going to appoint her, because she does not have low fertility. Um... Increased max HP. That would be a good one to uh, pair up with Cambridge X. Okay, so we're going to appoint her. And we need... This guy is... He's got low fertility, clumsy, and slow. Um, let's see. This guy is... How come he has lower fertility? Strange. None of them have a super high chance for children. That sucks. 
So what I'm actually I'm gonna actually make her partner this guy. Um, so I could appoint this dude up at the top here so that we just get basic Caberjack children, which is not too bad. Um, I would very much like that. However, if I appoint this guy, who is an alchemist, as her partner, then we get a hybrid class, which is called a Blast Capper. Uh, it's a Caberjack Alchemist hybrid. The, the special thing about the Alchemist is they have an area of effect explosive attack. So the Blast Capper actually gets an area of effect explosive attack, which can hit multiple enemies, and I love it. So let's go ahead and do that. I don't really like their choices of um, genetic traits and whatnot, but whatever. Are you sure you wish to marry Eris Dobefran and Olivier Riado? This choice is final and cannot be reverted. Chance for children high, so not super high, unfortunately. Trainee class, Blast Capper. Yes, let's do it. So maybe in the future uh, we can appoint um, somebody younger, a straight Caberjack, and give them a straight Caberjack partner. Who knows? Okay, so with that done, it takes us right back to the research, uh, choose new research screen, and we pick something new. So we're, we're going to get a third keep. It's going to take uh, nine years and 88 days now, as opposed to just five years. I'm going to put them in this portion in the augers, because it says it'll have reduced construction time. Boop. Eh, it says it still says nine years and 88 days. Maybe it's when it's built. All right, let's uh, hit the right trigger and let time pass. There should be, we should run into another battle before this Finally, second keep finishes, action. and we did. As you have no doubt surmised by now, it takes time for the Cadence to create its pawns. So they're only able to attack every few years. Unfortunately, you cannot fight back multiple incursions at the same time. Our primary focus is charging up to destroy our enemy, and we can only allot enough of our energy to send out one group of heroes at a time. Pawns don't last long outside of the Cadence, either. So even if you win one battle, it'll be too late to fight the other. Choose wisely, and... Blow the horns! <laughs> yeah! Hey, Mad Boo, what's going on, buddy? Thanks for coming. Um, for the record, those damn horns that you hear, they're the horns of everything. You hear them for whatever. <laughs> it's the same every time. Uh, it's supposed to be a running joke. Uh, a lot of people found it annoying. I thought it was subtly funny. Okay, so this is very similar to XCOM when you have um, multiple like abduction events going on, and you have to. There's like three of them, and you have to respond to one. But panic in the other two countries will increase. This is very similar. Um, whenever you do not repel an attack in a certain region. That region gains one point of corruption. Once a region has three points of corruption, that region gets destroyed. And if you have a building in that region, you lose it. Um, but you get differing rewards depending on which mission you go to. And there's also different enemies there too. So this bottom one, um, the types of cadence that will be in this battle are seeds and lapses. And the reward for a successful mission will be we get a 24-year-old female alchemist who will be level 1. So you can't get heroes as rewards, which is quite nice. Uh, now that this top one here in um, the augers, uh, the enemy types will be seeds and ruptures. Uh, the reward for completing this um, mission will be we get a 25% reduction on our current research time. Um, this is a tough one. I very much like to get more lapse kills because um, then I can get that veil armor for our hunters sooner. And having a 24-year-old female alchemist uh, would be kind of nice. Um, however, ruptures. Uh, rupture corpses are used for a special weapon that is like pretty much a must-have. Uh, the 25% reduction of current research time ain't that big of a deal. It's only going to cut down not even two years off of the construction of this keep. Um, I really want those rupture kills. We might need more heroes, though. I kind of just wore us thin. So let's just go ahead and do this one at the top here. Boop. There we go. The other thing, too, is because we constructed... Hang on. They're going to talk again, I think. Do you feel it? That little tingling in the air before a fight? I know they do. Here is where you can make any last-minute substitutions or preparations before you deploy your heroes to battle. And once you give the word, they'll jump in, 
and we'll handle the rest. Make sure they close their mouths when they jump. So you select your five heroes that you're taking into battle. You can actually launch with only one hero if you want, or like two or three or four. Uh, and then once they're ready to go, they supposedly they act, there's no actual animation for it, but they jump into the chalice, which then teleports them to the battle zone. Um, okay, so we're going to keep this hunter because she's level two, despite the fact that she has shitty vision and can wind up being drunk this battle. I don't care. We need to replace all the heroes that we appointed as regents and partners from earlier. Um, so the Cadence type will be Seeds and Ruptures. Uh, ruptures explode when they die, so I want at least one more Hunter to scout. What's this person got? Um, no bad traits. Personality. Avenger. Increased damage after the death of an ally. Insightful. Increased intuition. Sluggish. Reduced evasion against ranged attacks. That's not a big deal. So this is actually a good Hunter. Let's bring her along. She's got no significant negatives, and she's already level 2 as well, so we have two hunters level 2 that can use that follow-up skill, which is really good. Okay, so now I want at least maybe two alchemists. Hmm. Let's see. Impressionable. Doesn't matter. Clumsy. Decreased dexterity. Uh, child tendency. Daughters. Doesn't matter. Wily. Increased evasion against melee attacks. Reckless. This hero's careless manner. Decreases armor effectiveness. Uh, I don't care. She's kind of healthy. Um, so let's put her in. Use her. And then I want... Hmm, do I want another alchemist? Or do I just want two cape jacks? Let's see. Strong will. Personality is not influenced by parents or other trainers. Bear strength. Increased strength. Slow learner. Decreased XP gain. <laughs> That's terrible. Flincher. Reduced evasion against melee attacks. Not a fan. Faint hearted. Decreased damage after the death of an ally. Not a fan. Reveler. Often drunk or hungover. <laughs> he sucks. Uh, this chick is infertile. Puny, decreased strength. Clumsy, increased dex... Or, sorry, decreased dexterity. That's terrible. Uh, wily, increased evasion against melee attacks. That's good. Cocky, lowered evasion when at max health. That's not that great, but no big deal. Pack Hunter, improved stats when allies are nearby. I think I'm going to bring her along. She's not level 2 yet, but that's okay. Uh, so this alchemist, she's level 2. She has free throw. That's good. So with two alchemists... I'm debating if I should bring two Caber Jacks. I really am. Dim-witted, lower intelligence. That doesn't matter. Uh, personality. Wily, increased evasion against melee. Alert, increased evasion against ranged attacks. That's actually really good. Young at heart. A youthful outlook prevents the impact of age on stats. That's pretty good for combat. So this guy's not too bad. Let's bring him. I'm wondering if I want two alchemists for ranged attacks or if I should bring in two caber jacks for more knockback and stunning capabilities. Low fertility, nimble, increased dexterity, quick study, increased XP gain, and stalwart. That's actually not bad. Yeah, I might just bring him along. Clumsy and slow. That guy, no, I don't like the slow. Slow is the worst thing, in my opinion. Uh, nearsighted, that's not too bad because it's, he'll have scouts. Longevity for longer lifespan. Nimbled, increased dexterity, not a big deal. Lone Wolf, improved stats with no allies nearby. This guy strong-willed, doesn't matter. Uh, slow again, damn. So I'm going to bring in this Caber Jack guy because he's not bad. Uh, quick study, increased XP gain, plus the bonus XP we're getting from that cape that we constructed in that one region. That's not too bad. Okay, so two hunters, two caber jacks, and an alchemist. That's pretty balanced. Um, and one of the caber jacks is level two, so he has charge. So that's really good. That'll come in handy. We're going to try to level up this caber jack who's level one, feed him a couple kills so that he can get charge as well. All right, let's do this. This should be easy. And they jump in. Whee! The other impressive thing about this game is that the loading screens are actually pretty short. I don't go. know about you, but I'm ready to hit something today. Okay, so, uh, yeah, sometimes this can happen when you start off a mission, which sucks donkey dick, but hey, you roll with the punches. Okay, so this here, this is a rupture. We haven't seen this type of enemy before. Uh, I just want to check something really quick. Um, these guys are super annoying. They explode when they die, 
and they're they don't have a basic attack. Their attack is to run up to uh, one of your heroes and explode. Like they commit suicide and explode. The explosion puts some kind of corrosive material on the ground, which will it, it, it kind of zones out that area. Like your heroes cannot stand in it, otherwise they will take damage. Um, and if any of your heroes are caught in the explosion, they actually get a reduction in armor for the rest of the mission, which really, really sucks. So I want to make sure that I either kill that rupture this turn, or I stun it so that it can't walk up to somebody and hurt them. I think I'm just going to go with stunning it for now. Oh, you know what I can do? Okay, I'm just thinking this through. So if I get this guy, I'll keep this guy as backup. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll have this guy, he has charge, so it won't miss, and I will, it will guarantee to stun this rupture. Actually, it'll probably kill it, too. So I'll have this guy back up so that he's got a longer dash range with charge. Get him to back up a little bit. And what he'll do is he'll charge, knock the rupture into this seed, which will probably stun, which will probably stun or kill the seed as well. And then the rupture will die and explode, damage both of the seeds, which will kill this one, the one on the bottom, if it survived the hit, and damage the other one. And then I can use uh, any of my other heroes, like this other Caberjack, for example, or even just get this Alchemist to walk up and whack it with his claw weapon. Uh, that just that will just leave this one remaining seed left over, and I have two Hunters and a Caberjack left to deal with it. So let's do that. Okay, so charge. Here we go. Here we go. There's the stun. One seed is dead. Okay, so now I am going to get the Alchemist to move right up here and have them throw their flask. I'll put it right on top of this one. 92% chance. Actually, 98% chance in this square. See, this square, higher percent chance to hit. It's not right on top of an enemy, but I don't need it to be because they're still in the, in the blast zone. So I'm going to throw a flask here. It'll kill both of them. There we go. Handled. Boom! Yeah, we don't want to be caught in that explosion. And now you can see there's this nasty looking shit on the ground. And the cool thing is that what they did in this game is that there is an indication that you are moving your hero onto this bad zone. There's a sound effect. And there's a red mark on the tile uh, when you're moving the cursor. So um, there's a lot of things that they did in this game that I think is quite well done. This um, Again, the sound design is quite on point, in my opinion. Okay, so we're going to get... This Caberjack, I wanted to level up. He's the guy that has quick study, so increased XP gain. So I want him to run up and hit this. It's only 72% chance, though. Eh, whatever. Hit this seed. Kill him, please. Boom. There we go. Good. Okay, and now we can use the Hunters to run ahead. Put them in stealth mode. And they're going to scout up ahead. So that was a bit of a bad start, but we had... More than enough tools to work with so that um, none of those Cadence survived. So, A, we took no damage because, uh, which is good because we have no ways of healing right now. Uh, not until we get some more research projects done. Uh, and B, nobody suffered that, rupt ru that rupture explosion. I admire the new the rupture. I did what? They rush into battle, no concern for their own safety, knowing that as soon as they come upon their prey, They'll explode into a corrosive mess of pain and suffering. Even in death, they still hurt their enemies. It's beautiful. And disconcerting. <laughs> so let's move this guy. This guy can't move very far. But he must have, like, slow or something. Or is he drunk? Oh, yeah, he's dr He's hungover. Or sorry, she's hungover. That's fine. Move this one here. And, uh, unlike in XCOM, there's no, like, reaction fire. You, they don't, um, you know, you can't put them in something called, oh, in XCOM, you can put your soldiers in Overwatch, where when an enemy moves in their line of sight, they'll take a reaction shot, which, um, you didn't have to tell them to do. They just shoot at them. Uh, in this case, there is no such thing as that. When you're trying to approach an enemy, you gotta keep your guys out of line of sight until you're ready to execute the attack. So I'm going to keep my guys behind these trees. See, if I put somebody here, 
that could be within line of sight if this rupture moves even a little bit. But if I put them behind the tree, that's actually going to block line of sight uh, quite a ways. Like that rupture would have to move off to the side a fair bit. Now this alchemist, let's uh, move her up here. She's behind a tree. Of course, there's a bush in the way, which actually does not block line of sight, but you get the point. All right, so this person, she can't move very far yet again. Oh, man. This is what happens when you have alcoholic heroes. All right, let's move this person. Uh, let's move her over here. There we go. So we don't have line of sight on it yet, but there was a second rupture right in this area that we definitely spotted. So I don't want to alert them. I don't want them running up to our heroes and exploding. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. This is kind of risky, moving them up this close, but we're going to do it anyways. There we go. And then this guy can move up to here. That's good. And she can move up to here. All right, now let's get this hunter, move her here. She probably doesn't have very good sight range. Okay, so that rupture is now spotted. So for sure, two ruptures and a seed right up in front of us. So let's move this person here. She can see everybody. Let's get her to stop. I don't want to do anything yet. So I can still move this guy behind this tree, and he is pseudo-invisible because they don't have line of sight. But uh, I'm not going to do that. Let's put him down in this area. Actually, let's move the alchemist closer because I want her to be within range with one of her flasks. So let's put her... Yeah, let's put her right here. None of them have the eye icon, so they won't they won't be able to see her either because I'm blocking line of sight. That's what I want to do. So let's put her here, one square back, just to be safe in case this one takes like a couple steps to the side and sees her. Won't be able to get close enough and expose our invisible hunter. Super duper important. Now this guy, let's, let's just leave him there. Definitely going to leave this guy here where he is too. Okay, don't move too much. Ooh, okay. Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, so we lucked out here. They actually lined up so we can stun them very easily. Okay. Um, what do we want? How do I want to play this? So first things first. Let's go ahead and move the alchemist right up to here, and I'm going to get her to do a free throw to hit both of these guys. Actually, I'll just do a regular throw flask. Ninety-two percent. That's pretty good. So let's let's hit both of them. Um. Do a bunch of damage. Hopefully they don't both die. That's what I'm hoping doesn't happen, actually. There we go. Okay, perfect. Three health. That's what we wanted. So now I'm going to switch to this Caber Jack. Uh, because I'm trying to feed him kills so that he levels up. So with the knockback, I'm going to get him to knock back this rupture into this one. Um, so this one will actually explode right next to him, but it's, it's okay. It's just the once. The other one will get knocked back and explode well away from anybody. Let's do this. And they'll both be dead. There we go. And he leveled up. Uh-oh. <clears throat> See, that armor corrosion minus one. So he's actually going to take, like, two damage at the start of the next turn. Because he's sitting right on top of the corrosive shit. Um, so I just... He just leveled up. I just give him charge. That's what we want. Good times. Now, let's uh, feed some XP to one of these other hunters. Actually, why don't I just use this chick? Because she's further away. So let's move her up to here. What's up? You're dead. <laughs> Because I want to use this other hunter. Let's move her further forward. I want to. I want her to scout a bit further ahead. Go up this way. So this map layout, um, I've actually seen it several times. But what's different about it is that these little kind of land bridges, these are blocked. You got a big stone there, a big stone there, and a big stone there. So 
Um, while the map itself might be, you know, the same, the overall map might be the same as, like, you know, you see numerous times throughout the game, um, certain things do spawn, and they're, like, pseudo-procedurally generated, so they spawn in different spots, and will actually change how things pan out. And sometimes it completely changes uh, where you can go and, like, what parts of the map are accessible. There, he just took one damage. Corrosion damage. All right, so we need to get him off of that junk. Let's uh, move our scout hunter up to... This should be good, right here. So you can... You can see what I mean by this place is the augers, and it's got like all these autumn trees. The trees are dropping leaves everywhere, and you've got these kind of moai statues all over the place. So that's the ambiance of uh, this zone. Every time you play in this area, the map will have those uh, little things about it. Let's just move her up here. We don't need her stealth move. Uh, gonna get this guy behind the tree. Then we need to move up the Alchemist and the other Caber Jacks. So the Alchemist will actually be fine there. If the Seeds spot her, they won't be able to get her and damage her. And then we'll move this guy up to here, so we're good. Okay, you just keep running around there, buddy. Now, before I attack these guys and expose my heroes, I want to see what else is up there. So I want to scout a little bit more. Uh, let's get... This chick to just go right here for now. And we'll leave her there for a minute. This one. Hmm. Let's get this caber jack. Let's move this caber jack right up here. It's kind of risky, but let's do it. Gonna risk it for a biscuit. This hunter, she can stealth move up here. That way she can move on to either one of the other sides of this tree and possibly shoot at some enemies. Or she can move right up to one of the statues. Okay, now this alchemist, let's get her to move uh, right here. This should block line of sight from most things. And then this caberjack, I think he's kind of okay where he is, but let's put him up here. Closer is always good. And then this chick, let's just get her to stay there. Oh. They spotted one. Something just moved in. What was that? I didn't see that. Oh, great. Son of a bitch. So because this guy is uh, impressionable and can... Or chick is impressionable and she can uh, pick up on the personalities of other heroes. She just picked up Reveler. Mm, not a fan. Okay, I need to find whatever that was that moved up. I think it was a rupture. So I want to take care of it. ASAP. This guy. Hmm. Should I just do that? It's tempting. I have an idea. Let's move this guy right here. Uh, we'll move the chick up to here. Yep, there's the rupture. Can this guy stun it? Yes, he can. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Let's just knock it back and stun it because we want to deal with these seeds. Boop! Oh, fuck. That's not good. So because that was just a glancing blow, he didn't even knock it back. Which is bad. Okay, so this alchemist, she can't really do anything from where she is. She can hit this person and flat out kill it. So let's get her to do that. Move right over here. Bonk. Oh, another damn glancing blow. God damn it. I need to kill that rupture. My biggest problem with ruptures exploding on my heroes is that it's lost XP, basically. Alright, let's 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 ever do follow-up. Fuck it. Now tell oh, me I guess I didn't need to do follow-up. So he's going to suffer some damage because the seeds are probably going to attack him. But, uh, it's all good. Let's uh, thin their numbers a little bit. Let's get her to shoot this one. There we go. Taken care of. And then this guy can 
walk over here and hit this one. Another notch. Bonk. There we go. Okay, that could have been a lot worse. He's gonna take at least one more damage. Oh, two more. So this seed is in the goop. So I can only attack from certain directions. Um, who do I want to get some XP? Yeah, let's give this hunter some XP. Or she can flat out miss her shot. That's fine too. <laughs> Damn it. All right, Alchemist, you're up. You're all fired. You're all fired. You all suck. You're all fired. I I'm getting new heroes. <laughs> oh, the fun of XCOM-esque games. This is Massive Chalice. This is Massive Chalice in a nutshell right here. Missing all attacks. All right, so this guy can actually hit them from there. This guy cannot get there, so let's fuck it. The guy that is about to level up, he's gonna level up. God damn it! This is Massive Chalice, folks. <laughs> this happens. Holy fuck. Both hunters missed. The two characters that I wanted to attack it with melee got glancing blows. Oh my goodness. Thank you. <laughs> Son of a bitch. It's turns like that that can really fuck you over on the harder difficulties, and that's why it's so difficult, and that's why I have not beaten brutal difficulty in iron mode. Because things like that can happen. Alright, let's have this guy hang out here. He's just going to spot targets if they move around. Let's get the alchemist up here. And we'll get this guy way over here. So I need to cross this little bridge. Check out the area up ahead. Now, um, advanced fact, uh, that music started playing because we killed a guy, which denotes that um, we have killed over half of the Cadence on the map. So there's actually quite a few more, which is good, because I need more rupture kills. I want more rupture kills. Let's just move the alchemist up here. Okay. That's good. Enemy spotted. That's what I want to see. Can you shoot them from here? No, you have to get really close. So you just wait right there. Caber Jack. Um, just move up here. Your heroes can block your other heroes from moving. That is a thing. Let's move this guy up here. So if that seed stays put, which it did, perfect. Okay, so let's move this hunter up here. Prepare to fire! God damn it! <laughs> For fuck's sake! Uh, what else is up here? Ooh, hello, Rupture. Alright, let's uh, back the fuck off. Uh, you need to run away. Get out of there. And you move up closer. There we go. And this hunter... Uh, you just go right here. That'll do. Okay. Can you shoot this person? No. Why not? Uh, oh, because they're behind the freaking pillar thingy. That's fine. Okay, we're close enough where we can do some stealth moving now. That's fine. Let's move up there, and then let's get the alchemist to... Uh... This is kind of risky, but I don't think... I'm hoping there's nothing up here on the left. Oh, there is. Hello, Rupture. Alright, let's move this hunter up here. And she can stay put. This Caberjack can move over to here. And that should... Mm, Amazingly, that rupture can't still see him, but even if that... There's a fair bit of area that that rupture can move into uh, that is blocked by the tree, and he should be safe from being spotted from the other enemies because of that um, rock in the way. Now, this guy, I think I'm just going to have him stay put. Actually, I'll put him here. Blocking line of sight with that little rock. That's fine. There, see? It's behind the tree. We're good. 
Okay, so this rupture here needs to die. It has spotted our heroes, so we need to kill it. I think what I'm just going to do is uh, move this hunter up here. Get her to use follow-up. Thank you! That is how you hit the target. It's not that difficult, is it? <laughs> Jeez. All right, 654, 585, so let's get this guy. Actually, before I do that, let's get this hunter here to stealth move over here. There's another seed. Okay. I was worried about another rupture over there hiding or some such nonsense, but that's not an issue. So let's get this guy to just move up here and kill this seed. Oh, did you see Boop. the way that one went down? Yes, I did. In fact, I ordered it. Okay, so let's move the alchemist over here. Need to get away from that rupture hiding behind the tree because it could poke out at any time and be like, surprise, bitches! That guy behind the pillar. Okay. I don't mind taking this damage. There we go. All's good in the neighborhood because now you die, bitch. Okay, now we need to scout around a little bit more. Is there anybody else in this corner over here? That's what I'm looking for. It's entirely possible there's still like a square or two over here that I don't have vision on, so there could be enemies in there. I just want to, you know, make damn sure. Can't quite tell. Let's move over here. Ooh, there's a seed over there. Shit, okay. Yeah, let's keep her here, behind this pillar. The nice thing about alchemists is, unlike hunters, they don't need line of sight, so they can throw their flasks over objects. Which is super handy. Hello, seed. Hello, rupture. Oh, that's a new rupture. There's the other one. Okay. Alright, so... Our alchemist has free throw available, so I can get her to throw two flasks in this one turn. So let's move her up here. Free throw on these sons of bitches, which might not kill them. And here we go. Free throw. Boop. Yep, definitely didn't kill them. Um, do I want her to level up? Yeah, I don't see why not. So let's get her to do a normal flask throw now to kill these two guys. Bye-bye. Send them back to that sludge from whence they came. Now, unfortunately, I think she's standing on the only square where my caber jacks would be able to safely melee this seed and not suffer uh, corrosion damage. However, yeah, yeah, let's get this caber jack to do it. Oh, never mind. That's square. That works. Bop. Okay, and we're done. This Sweet. This battle will be studied for years to come. After all that, I should hope so. So, most everybody leveled up to level 3 because of that. This person, she only needs another 21 XP to level up to level 3. So, that's pretty cool. Alright, there's only about, uh, there's a little less than 10 minutes left in the stream. I started a little late, so I'm just going to keep going for a full two hours. We're going to proceed. At the very least, I think... Oh, see? Research time reduced. The time to complete research of build to keep has been reduced by one year and 186 days. So not really worth it. But, uh, you know, whatever. We got those rupture kills and I really want those. So now this region in the salt stacks, you can see it's got that filled in um, yellow diamond. That means that it has one point of corruption. And I'm going to want to defend this area in the future because it has the plus research bonus for a local Sage Rites Guild, which is actually pretty huge. Uh, so I'm going to want to use that area. Um, okay, so now it's less than five years for our next keep to be finished. And what do we have here? Enforcer, so that's a hunter class. Then Blast Capper, which is Caber Jacks. So we'll need a house of alchemists to make babies in that keep. Um, I want to check something really quick. We can change our research projects 
if we wanted to, but I don't want to. See, we've also got a special alchemist armor, un unstable carapace armor. That's from rupture kills. Ramcap caber, that's what I want. Need 16 rupture kills. We only have seven. Damn, okay. There's also the perilous core item, which is pretty cool. It's like a super bomb. But, uh, you know, we'll touch on those later. It's very, very unlikely that you get every item and armor and, like, everything available in a single playthrough. It's it's very, very rare. Uh, like, you have to really rush uh, at least one, usually two, Sage Rite skills, like, early, early to reduce research by a lot. And when you do that, you kind of fuck yourself over because you don't have enough keeps uh, continuing the bloodlines of your heroes, so... It's really, really tough to get every item in a single playthrough. Got some more babies coming up. Good. Babies are good. Okay. Keep has been completed. That's what I want to see. All right. So we need uh, Alchemist. Uh, clumsy decreased dexterity. Unfortunately, she's a reveler now, too. <laughs> That's terrible. Um, yeah, yeah. Bedtime reminder. Go away. Um, let's see. What about this person? Strong-willed, bare strength, slow learner. Uh, slow learner is terrible. Uh, this person's infertile. That's not good. Low fertility. Oh, that's terrible. I think it's going to have to be this person. Impressionable, clumsy, child tendency, daughters. Uh, wily. I hate that reveler personality. Ugh, I really hate that. Hmm, let's change it up by class. So yeah, I only have one, two, three, four alchemists to choose from. And most of them are terrible because this, this one has slow learner, so she has reduced XP gain. This one is infertile, which she can't have babies. This one has low fertility, so yep. One with the best option available to us. This happens a lot in Massive Chalice where it's like, oh man, I have no real good choices. Well, you just got to make do with what you can. There we go. And that leaves us with... Okay, so we've got a average fertility Caberjack, who is also clumsy, decreased dexterity, and slow, decreased movement range. So unfortunately, this guy that I wanted to avoid um, having babies, but uh, I'm going to have to use him because these other two dudes who could make babies have low fertility, so that's awful. Um, the training class will be Brutalist. That is an alchemist with, instead of regular exploding flasks, they get knockback flasks. So they do, I think, a little bit less damage uh, per hit, but they knock back enemies one square from the impact point, which is pretty cool. So we'll appoint that. Uh, are you sure you wish to marry? Blah, blah, blah. This choice is final and cannot be reverted. Chance for children high. Trainee class Brutalist. Uh, yep, we're going to do that. Oh, the other thing about the Brutalist is that they they got a couple skills that make them focus a little bit more uh, on the on the melee aspect of, of being an alchemist. So they can actually be a bit of a melee bruiser, which is kind of comical. Okay, so the cost of building a Crucible and a Sage Rites Guild has actually been reduced by a teeny tiny bit because we built uh, a structure in that reduced build, reduced build time zone. Um, I might just go with a building because aside from the health vial, there aren't really any good options. Maybe hero discovery boost. Uh, let's get a crucible going. We definitely need a standard as soon as possible. Sooner rather than later. Um, all right, so let's construct in the pale sea. Now, something that I haven't noted is that, uh, these outer regions are the ones that get attacked uh, but once they're gone, then the inner regions start getting attacked until, you know, they lose all their corruption. It's actually possible if you build, if you construct a building in any of these outer regions and whatnot, the building itself can suffer an attack and you have to defend that building. So if we have like a Sage Rites Guild in these areas, then the researchers working there are getting attacked. And if they die in the, in the, um, in the mission, um, like in the combat screen and stuff, then you lose those researchers. And if a keep gets attacked and you lose the regent and or the partner, then, you know, you lose their ability to make babies. You can appoint a new regent or partner, of course, but it really, really mucks things up. Sound the horns of passing. Uh. 
It's tough, but now you've got an idea of what to expect from this campaign. Lots of horns. The partner will return to your retinue, and you'll have to appoint a new regent and partner to continue the bloodline. Your heroes await your decision. Okay, so unfortunately the um, Caberjack with heart disease that we uh, appointed as regent, she's died. So we have to appoint somebody new to take her place, and it's going to be either one of her siblings or uh, one of her offspring. And if it's one of her offspring, you can't reappoint... I can't reappoint her husband as a new partner because that is incest. And this game has anti-incest mechanics built into it, which is actually kind of well done. It's it, like any of Eris Doberfran's children cannot have their dad as a partner. Unfortunately, somebody that I have to appoint is either six or seven years old. Oh my god. Traits. Sickly. Decreased max HP. Asthmatic. Movement is reduced after sprinting in a previous turn, which is not that great. Uh, and slow learner. Decreased XP gain. Awful, awful, awful. How about this guy? Impressionable uh, personality. Strongly influenced by other heroes in combat. Bear strength. Increased strength, which is pretty good for a um, Caper Jack class. Sickly, decreased max HP. That is actually not too bad. It, we could work with that. Let's go ahead and appoint him. He's only six years old, though. So I gotta try and find a woman who is still kind of sort of young, but we don't have one. So you know what? I'm just not going to appoint a partner just yet. Hmm. Or should I? Nearsighted, longevity, and nimble. Lone wolf. I might just go with that. Strong willed, nimble, and slow. That's terrible. Um So it's like an it's in like another ten years, less than ten years before he can have babies because he can no longer be a trainee. Um So she'll be in her forties. Damn. Damn. Ah, oh, that's tough. Ah, oh, fuck it. Let's do it. There we go. And so these trainees that are um, here, which one of them is a regent, these trainees are blast cappers. And now because the the regent is a blast capper, which is a caberjack hybrid, uh, and their his partner is a regular caberjack, um, or one of the caberjack classes, I should say, then their children will be. Um, a plain caper jack. All right, let's uh, pass time. I'm gonna keep going until. I the day I finished my training. Oh, graduation day. The capital. There was a lot of crying, mostly from the kids I crushed during my advanced gouging final. What a day that was! It always arrives faster than one expects. So when heroes come of age, they are transferred to the capital for active duty. They can be sent to fight the Cadence on tactical missions or signed to be regents, partners, sage rights, or standards. So our first baby, she's all grown up. Ooh, Hawkeye, increased sight range, dim-witted, lower intelligence, not that good. Puny, decreased strength, not that good. Personality, reveler, <laughs> cocky, lowered evasion when at max health. So not too, too bad. It could have been a lot worse. Uh, I do like the Hawkeye, though, so we're going to use her. She's level 2 as well. Um, pretty much from this point on, all of the offspring will be available at level 2, so they'll all get their first skill. So this is an Enforcer. Uh, she does not get uh, the, the um, what's it called, follow-up. She gets knockback arrow. Different skill. Uh, but she'll be useful in combat because of that Hawkeye ability increasing her sight range. That'll be really handy for scouting. Before, you were making choices on the battlefield. Now, you'll be making choices on the battlefield of life. <coughs> what? Come on. I will not apologize if I'm passionate about... You know when you guide the heroes in battle? Well, sometimes the people, your heroes included, will want your advice on matters they can't decide themselves. They'll be putting their choices in your hands, and sometimes their lives. And the decisions you make may affect the morale of the nation. Unfortunately, we've learned that the Cadence feeds off grief and malcontent. So if something tragic happens, corruption can spread very quickly. 
But the opposite is true, too. We will trust your decisions, whatever they end up being. Uh, so, random events do pop up as time progresses, and you are left choosing... Um, or, well, you're left with a choice that you have to make, and the results are kind of randomized um, between what can happen. So, in this case, uh, Cult of the Cadence, Quint Havis stands before you with a wheezing old man. I was doing my rounds outside of the capital when this old codger comes running out from the forest. He tells me that he's part of a group that worships the Cadence and that one of the towns nearby is attacking his mates. The old man puts his hands up. We don't want to hurt anybody. Please help us. Uh, so we can do nothing. The villagers are doing the work for for you. Uh, we can help the cult. All beliefs are welcome here, even potentially dangerous ones. Or we can arrest the cult. This should have been nipped in the bud sooner. Uh, a cult of the cadence does not sound like a good idea to me, so we need to arrest the cult. Boop. Cult closed. Quint journeys to the village and promises the cult's safety. In the dungeons! As the members are shackled and taken away, the village settles back into its old habits of pie festivals and rigged pig races. Quint Havis has gained the stalwart personality. So sometimes these events can give extra little personality gimmicks to your heroes. Uh, sometimes bad things can happen and corruption can increase somewhere within the nation. Uh, sometimes good things can happen which can reduce corruption. Sometimes um, something unique happens and it's like, bam, all of a, all of a sudden... You have, like, reduced time on your current research project, or whatever. Various things can happen with these random events. So, um, this hero getting the stalwart personality is actually pretty good. He's in our vanguard, so that's not bad. Okay, our crucible is almost done. Territory attack, alright. So, here in Ebbet Marsh... We will have seeds and ruptures. Ooh, more rupture kills would be good. A 22-year-old female alchemist, level 1, will be the reward. Or over here in the Cinderlands, seeds and ruptures for enemies again. And the reward is 1.5 times experience for each enemy killed. That's actually pretty huge. Um, hmm. We could use another alchemist, though, so that's extremely tempting. Damn. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to defend the region with our keep. Because we could use another alchemist. Even if we don't really use her and I just appoint her as like a partner or something. Actually, that's what I'm going to do. She's going to become the... I don't care what the fuck her stats are. She's going to become... Oh, no, wait. I already apply, I already assigned a partner for the really young Caberjack region, didn't I? Damn. Well, I could pick this one and then we could power level our guys a little bit more. Because they would uh, gain even more XP. Hmm. This is actually kind of a tough decision. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I usually, like in a game that I'm not streaming, I usually don't ponder this much over every little decision in the early portions of the game. Um, shit. I don't want the cape to gain more corruption along with this bottom area because I want to put a Sage Rite skill in that bottom area. And then if they both are gaining corruption, then I'll have to make a decision and sacrifice one of those buildings later down the road. Shit. Um, I think nothing is more valuable than more heroes, so we're going to go defend Ebbet Marsh. Okay, so we have to replace the alchemist that uh, was in our vanguard earlier. Details. Okay, so this person is ready for battle now, too. Let's check her out. Him out, excuse me. Puny, decreased strength, not good. Nimble, increased dexterity, that is good. Uh, child tendency, sons, increased chance of having boys, doesn't matter in combat. Uh, personality, stalwart, that's pretty good. Let's check out our other alchemists. This guy's level 60, this person's level 37. Strong will, bear strength, slow learner. Eh, flincher, faint hearted, and reveler, none of those are good. Impressional, bull, bear strength, and sickly. I'm going to appoint this guy. He's going to come with us into battle. Could you always use an alchemist. You never know when you might need to be able to hit more than one enemy. So this looks pretty good. For seas and ruptures, two caber jacks to stun, two hunters to hit from long range, and an alchemist to do some AoE blast attacks uh, if necessary. All right, this is good. We're going to deploy. And that's actually going to be it for this stream. So I've gone over the two-hour limit. Did a lot of talking this time around. There was a big information dump. We don't want to keep the cadence waiting. 
Oh, Jesus Christ. What a great start. You've got to be fucking kidding me. Sometimes this happens. This is Massive Chalice. Alright, I'm going to save the game. And it is game two. Boop. There we go. And we'll quit back to the main menu. Okay, so that is the first stream of Massive Chalice. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be streaming this three times a week for the next little while here until we uh, either... Uh, quite a bit of introducing it, though. Yeah, it was uh, it was a lot. Um, it's at, Honestly, the game is a fair bit deeper than it looks on the surface because you have to... Like I said, you have to worry about the fact that, uh, you know, until, like, the very end of the game, when, the, when you're nearing those 300 years, it's like, well, my best heroes, who are all, like, high high level and have powerful weapons and ha each of them has like a bunch of kills under their belt it's like well they're going to die of old age eventually do I have a good enough set of heroes to replace them and if you don't then it's like well shit now what do I do I gotta try to you know pick the best vanguard out of this motley array of um, gobbledygooks that I can and stuff like that so I, I think it's in some ways, it's a little tougher than XCOM, uh, because there is a lot more long-term planning that you have to consider, uh, in my opinion, or at least in my experience, I should say. Um, anyways, like I said, that's going to be it for tonight. Big thank you to JB, Madboo, and um, Tony Knot for coming by tonight's stream. Greatly appreciate it. I hope to see you folks in the next Massive Chalice stream, which will be uh, Thursday, November 5th. Uh, will be the next time we jump back into Mass Chalice when we are defending Ebbet Marsh. So those of you watching this on YouTube, thank you very much for watching. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Consider subscribing to the channel to see some more of my content. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Mass of Chalice if you're looking forward to uh, more of this playthrough. And also check out the links in the description below. You'll find a link to my Twitch, feed, uh, Twitch channel, which I streamed this off of. Come on by and watch me playing whilst I am live. Uh, as I said, I stream games Tuesday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday every week. Uh, you'll also find a link to my Twitter feed. Give me a follow there. I post important announcements all the time. Last but not least, a link to my own personal Discord. It's not mandatory, but do join so you can take part in things like viewer polls to determine what games I play on stream. This is Moby's Why signing off for now. Thank you very much for watching yet again. And I'll see you again soon. I'll be back tomorrow with Stellaris Console Edition. Until then, take care.